All right. Then he goes on to say there are at least 827 words and phrases in the days of King James that have changed their meaning and are no longer used in our modern, everyday English language. Okay, I'd like to see the list of 827 words and phrases. I'd like to see them. I guarantee you that most of them, the vast majority of them, would be still used in our modern day English. Okay. This, I mean, this, this kind of stuff is just out and out lying. I do not believe for one second that there are 827 words and phrases that are no longer in use today. And I'm going to show you why I am calling him a liar there. Okay, first of all, send me the list. Okay, send me the list of 827 words and phrases. You know, send it to me. But look, let's look at some of the words he gives as an examples there. First, he says, suffer. Okay. Suffer means to allow. Now it's interesting because if you get into any kind of debate with witches, they will always throw up Exodus chapter 22 verse 18 which says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, or allow a witch to live. Isn't it weird that the witches know what that verse means? <laughs> they know what it means. I mean, give me a break. Oh, oh, well, we use it differently now and everything. Again, look it up. Expand your vocabulary. Raise your IQ. It's not a bad thing. The word, the second word he gives, filthy lucre. Okay, let me just show you something about this. Okay, here we have a book by Lawrence Vance called Archaic Words and the Authorized Version. Now let's look up this word lucre. Of course, you know what filthy means. That's not archaic at all. But let's look up the word lucre. Okay, there he gives a scripture which contains the word lucre. There's your filthy lucre right there. And then he gives the definition. You can read that on your own time. But it says down here, Sports Illustrated Magazine certainly did not think it was archaic. They quote, he quotes it here. It says, teenage champions turn pro too early and often burn out to become or become monsters while tennis authorities fail to discipline or educate them, afraid to offend the source of all that lucre. And right there he gives a footnote. We'll go back here to the end notes and Sally Jenkins, the sorry state of tennis, Sports Illustrated, May 9th, 1994. So much for the lucre being archaic and not used anymore. Okay, it is used today, so he lied. Uh, but the next word he has here is quick, meaning alive. Okay, well, certainly that's not used anymore, is it? Uh, well, actually, yes, it is. Uh, there was a movie that came out a number of years ago. Filthy movie, rotten movie, don't watch it. But it was called The Quick and the Dead. Here's a picture of it. Or how about Highlander 2, The Quickening? Okay, uh, oh, quick is not used anymore. Oh, it absolutely is. But I just want to show you something here that Hollywood oftentimes will use King James type phraseology in their movies and in things like that, they'll use it because Hollywood is satanic. The people out there are Satanists, most of them, and they are they spend their time in attacking the Bible and trying to tear it down. And I'm going to show you the verse where they got this quick and the dead thing from. Let me show you. Okay, here we have the King James Version. It says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Right there you have it in the King James Version. But how does the NIV, Billy Crone's NIV, how does it render it? As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Well, wait a second. Where's about the quickening? Where's about the making alive? It's not in there. Look at that. Isn't that something? Why would they take out, you hath he quickened? As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Isn't that something? All right, now let's look at the next word, which he has listed here. The word is lunatic. What's well, interesting, if you go onto the internet, go to Google and type in lunatic, and you'll come up with all kinds of things, <laughs> I can assure you. It's kind of funny here, I found this picture of a beauty salon called the Lunatic Fringe. <laughs> uh, probably don't want to go there if you're a Christian. Uh, next, he has wax. That something, you know, waxing. 
Um, which is kind of interesting because haven't you ever heard of the moon waning and waxing? Again, it's not archaic. It's not out of use. People can understand what it means. Okay. Number six there, the sixth word that he has listed is charity. Now this is a big debate, you know, it should be charity instead of love and or love instead of charity in 1 Corinthians 13. No, it shouldn't. I actually have a sermon on that. I did a whole message on why it should be charity. Charity is the correct reading in 1 Corinthians 13, not love. Okay? But we actually have a whole denomination here, a Christian denomination where I live called Charity Ministries. It's not archaic. I mean, again, why would you pick a word like charity and say, oh, that, that's, you know, no longer people don't understand what it means? It's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And then he has a problem with the term gay clothing. Hmm. I thought I heard a Christmas song the one time that said something about, don we now our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Oh, but nobody knows what it means anymore. Yeah. Uh huh. And we're going to see, by the way, the NIV. I'm going to show you a little bit later. The NIV has the word gaiety in it. So his arguments are just so, so pathetic, really. Uh, but let's continue here. He says, here's a modern paragraph told completely in the language of the KJV. How well can you understand it? And then what this cheap little liar does, this just false prophet, little con artist, he takes words that do appear in the King James Version, and he constructs them into a fake paragraph. A paragraph that's not based on Scripture. A paragraph of his own invention to prove that the King James Bible is too hard to understand. Unbelievable. You talk about a deceiver. You talk about a con artist. This is incredible. And by the way, you look up these sentences, that sentence structure, it doesn't appear anywhere in the King James Version. The King James Version is so simple under, to understand. There are kids that can understand it. But the way he perverts it here of his own writing, of his own imagination, he makes it look like, oh, you can't understand that thing. Billy Crone, you are a liar. Okay? That is deception. If you are saved, and I say it's a big if, if you are saved, you're going to answer for that. Okay? It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I'm going to show you, by the way, if you want to talk about archaic words, let me just show you a couple in the NIV. Lawrence Vance. We're going to go in here to the archaic words in the NIV. Here you have the NIV on the left, where it belongs, left. And on the right you have the authorized version. Okay? Look at this one. Voice. Acclamation. I put the NIV in pink and the King James in blue. thought that was appropriate too. How about story, annotations, chains, armlets, strong, blustering. Well, that clears it up. How about children, brood, colonnade, porch. Hey, let's go sit out on the front colonnade. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Boy, the NIV sure clears it up there. How about a riot? Coming soon to a city near you. No, we have dissipation today. You know, the L.A. dissipations. Hurricane Katrina dissipations. Yeah, give me a break. How about enter, encroach? Over here we have destruction. Gadfly. Gadfly. Yeah, archaic. Gaiety versus mirth. See, the old hypocrite Billy Crone won't show you stuff like that. Over here, we have nations in the King James. How about the NIV, goyim? So I could say some more on that, but for sake of time, I won't. Cheeks. Jowls. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, pause this and look this thing up. Or buy the book if you want to. It's a good book. And there's a whole lot more here that I am not going to have time to cover. But the point is there are many, many, many words in the NIV that are far more archaic and out of use than the King James Version. 